Where's the Here's the title that I'll fast forward from that. Yeah, so so um, kind of tried to make this make sense for for three different things. So there's this short. Um, I was asked to do something like uh, actually shorter than the thing I, what what I submitted to you. So I sort of made a longer version so that it would make sense. And then um, this is for the, for um, the Europe Now online journal, um, which was that it's supposed to be just for a really general audience. And so sort of like cutting out the stuff that would interest like media scholars, just kind of think think about it in the context of um, the special issue is like Europe in you know, sort of like um, Europe in film and media and how like, especially with a focus on um, apparatus or industry and um, sort of um, institutional you know, promotion of, of things. Um, and then the, the, the draft part on Capitani was something that I took from, I, I had a, a longer, piece that's like a going to be a book chapter but it's the last chapter of this book on screen borders and it just I mean normally that would make sort of more sense but it doesn't make sense to share the last chapter of a book because obviously it refers back to a lot of other things so I excerpt sort of excerpted that part if that, that doesn't sound right to say it looks right paper, but um and then obviously as we've already talked about there's just like so much so much material and I'm really fascinated in particular by the the forest ones which I mean this is just obviously one just one thread of forest things and and um, they're certainly not uniquely European either but in the context of kind of this border discussion I think they're they're really fascinating um, so I don't know if um, anybody's seen any of these it's a little harder to find um, if you're not I think I've, if you're just watching HBO in Europe you could watch the two seasons that are out um, but I it, it's really fascinating because I think it's a really subtle show it was did well in in Poland. They had over a million viewers, which was one of the highest, um, you know, HBO uh, for any HBO series um, for the the first season of it. Um, the the first season was available. I bought the the DVD from the UK. It was advert sold as the Border, which is not um, really an exact translation of the title. It really the title means the pack. So I think it's kind of fascinating that things get. Uh, you know, sort of repackaged in for, for European consumption in particular with the border title. There are a couple other examples of this and the, the German title, um, the German release also used the border in the title um, in a way that's not in the original at all. So that's kind of interesting. Um, and, but, I, but I think as I talk about in the, the essay, I think it's really fascinating how this idea of an outer border and all of the anxieties that go along with that are reflected in you know dozens of series that are set on you know would have been for you know over 25 you know, um, years uh, or 25 years now like you know sort of you know theoretically um, less significant in, in internal borders so I think there's a lot of interesting um, you know, speculation on on that and these are all just kind of standard this is sort of the um, the trailer from the um, Aero TV, Nordic Noir and Beyond, I think that for the UK distribution on the extreme edge of Europe, dun, dun, dun. So you sort of like all, all of these things that, you know, in, in 2015, 2000, 2016, when it came out in the UK, like what people would be thinking about with borders. Um, but, but then as these pictures show, it's, it's actually a very nuanced, it's not just about the uh, sensational side. I mean, you have as the picture on the bottom right shows, the border is also, I mean, the borders are so many things simultaneously. So it's like fraught with all of these fears and anxieties. And, um, but then you have just this, this is the border. It's a, it's a field. You can't tell well, you know, where, where does Poland start? Where does Europe end? You know, where does um, beyond Europe um, begin in, or vice versa in this, this image? I mean, it also, it, and, and there are a lot of things circulating around, including wolves, um, a serial killer at some point, but, you know, trappers, lot, all, all kinds of people who live off of, so it's got a little bit of, a little bit of everything. And I put the wolf in here because that seems to be a um, recurring, uh, recurring image in, in forest series. Um, these, I don't really have to go through these because they're, they're kind of from the article, but for everybody who, um, who already read that, but I think one of the interesting things really is just that um, maybe number five, which might be a little different than I phrased it as the in in the text that you read, the sort of that I think that these series are really fascinating because if you if we're thinking about 
ratings and algorithms and how it's decided to remake, you know, what's made, what's remade in different contexts, what's distributed and bought. Um, and there are lots of different models that I talk a little bit about, but just really barely scratching the surface, you know, how HBO does things versus how Netflix does things or how, you know, public service broadcasters do things um, and the partnerships that sort of add, mostly ad hoc, but that are obviously encouraged by, um, by you know, funding, uh, co-production funding schemes but it, I think it's really kind of a fascinating way because I mean we tend to think about that series are I mean in film studies is still um, and especially if you come from more of a, lang a language and cultural studies strain of that like there's the idea that like series are somehow you know not as insightful as as uh, films which you know or not as artistic and insightful as obviously that's changed a lot just in terms of you know who's making series and the approach to it but I think um, if we're thinking about borders in particular it's really fascinating because or, or you know really any social thing because it's, it's rather than just a snapshot in time however insightful that could be that you have this um, ability to sort of um, in, a, in a series it can go deeper but it can also you know over multiple seasons react and respond to things so I, I talk about in the essay about um, the tunnel or the tunnel um, Pre, pre, back, pre Brexit vote and post Brexit vote um, in Vataha. There's um, the second season is after the um, you know Syrian war, so that the, the the landscape of what's crossing the border is very different, and that's reflected in the um, in the plot too. So that I think there's some interesting ways, and then just sort of in a way, I, I would sort of sum it up saying like the, these border series can collectively maybe tell us what we think as viewers or citizens, like what we think about what our outlooks or you know, fears and anxieties or thoughts on borders are in a lot of ways. A um, couple other, um, and just, this is just one example, but the, I mean, there, there's a lot of really interesting um, scholarship on that really focuses mostly on sort of Nordic noir and, and moving out from there and a lot less so far that's dealt with other, um, geographic context, at least not in direct connection to Nordic Noir. This is one of the ones that I found, you know, the transnational European television drama, which, you know, it's it's a transnational framing, but as you can sort of see from the names, like everybody's coming from this context of working on Nordic Noir for the most part, um, which, is, which is quite interesting. And there, there are several other, you know, um, that are mentioned in the bibliography, but the um, interesting things, but there, there's really so far not as much has been done from, you know, other, other perspectives. Um, these are my categories. I just wanted to show these pictures to everybody um, briefly. And, and if anybody's seen, has um, I know, I guess you said most people haven't seen the vast majority of these, right? So, um, so maybe the pictures will be useful. I think Midnight Sun is really, I think Chelsea, you said you wanted to watch that, but that, I think that's really interesting. Um, and, you know, entirely not original in some ways, but also very original in some way. Like it's clearly like sort of doing a thing that they're trying to channel other things that were popular yet it, in the way they did it, I think was interesting um, just in terms of, you know, channeling Arctic, what, what some people talk about is like Arctic noir, but also um, this anxiety about space and you know, literally shifting place, changing place, and also the, um, the, the layer that's really interesting is you have the indigenous Sami detective and the Berber Algerian French from Marseille working in Paris, French detective who goes there to invent. So there's just like all these layers of, of different, you know, sort of qualifying national identity in different ways and, and um, the format of the series. And so, so it sort of combines this Nordic noir popularized approach with, um, you know, something that's also been a thread in sort of like French detective fiction of sort of layering like crimes with, you know, different layers of past history, like October, uh, August 1961, um, you know, Algerians being thrown in the Seine and um, decolonization and, you know, things like that. So it's really fascinating. Um, but just an idea of some of the images of like net network. Um, these other two are both from uh, waste. Wasteland, which I think is really, really good series as well. You can watch it on HBO um, by the Czech director Elitsa Nellis. Um, so that that's HBO strategy is they they tend to hire um, a local locally known director. So that it's a really interesting connection of between um, you know a local local know how or sort of local approach, but also um, you know the shows are commissioned by HBO Europe. You know somebody. Um, they're going to, they're Americans and other Europeans involved in doing this and they're doing it from like the office in Prague, probably for the most part. So there, there's kind of a trans, you know, transnational, international conglomerate involved, but then there's also this, um, interesting, interesting local, they, they leave space for the local approach too. 
And uh, um, th there's some interesting readings of that in um, some of the sources, um, especially Aniko Imre's um, article that I that I mentioned in the um, in the bibliography, but I only quote a couple, you know, very briefly. Some of, there are a lot of interesting things there. Um, specifically infrastructure. Has anybody seen any of these? I feel like these are probably the, the bridge and the tunnel are, um, the tunnel was on PBS in the US. So I, it, it kind of got, you know, pretty wide, interesting, um, you know, distribution in interesting places. But, you know, this clear emphasis on the, uh, they sort of take the Nordic noir aesthetic approach, but then a lot of the spaces are, um, I mean, you get some of the same post-industrial gray, um, you know, the, the ports, the, the seascapes, the coasts, the things like that. But then there's this really interesting focus on, on infrastructure and, you know, how um, a little more so, I guess there's more infrastructure to deal with in the tunnel than there is just in the bridge. I mean, you can only show the bridge so many, the actual bridge, the, um, the bridge so many times. One, one really fascinating thing though, that one I think is the third different remake of, of that is, which is up in the upper right-hand corner here, um, Der Pass, or the, which was translated as Pagan Peak. But um, it um, takes that story and takes out the infrastructure and sets it in the forest. So I think that's kind of an interesting, I mean, there, there's, a, there's a road, but that's about as much infrastructure as you have. So uh, um, obviously less infrastructure in that particular border, but it, it's kind of a fascinating, you know, they didn't, they went out of their way to not focus on sort of like a tunnel or I don't know, so, something, something like that and really play up the, the forest setting. Um, and the forest, just to give you a little bit of a taste, I mean, these are different images. I, I could have filled the whole pr presentation with just like forest, forest images, which are kind of um, recurring, but um, the, sub, uh, the, the subtitle from the bottom right hand one down here is from La Treve or The Break, the um, a Belgian French co-production that's available on Netflix, wasn't originally done by Netflix, but um, they bought it um, soon after the first season. But um, one of the, the, the plot lines, which is a recurring theme is that um, there's a proposal to sort of to, to create a reservoir and it would flood this whole valley. So the land that they're on is actually going to literally disappear. So this is kind of um, something that that uh, keeps keeps coming up in these. Some, sometimes in the, you know, to a smaller extent, but then not as or dramatic as that. Um, temporal borders, which I, I kind of have less to say or about, obviously in the, in the piece, but I needed to include. And did you you said you saw beforeners, Chelsea? You know, what, what did you, yeah, I mean, you could, of, I've seen both of these actually, but what I've seen both of these actually. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Dark. I, I don't have as much, I mean, I would need to, uh, I sort of haven't gone in that direction. So I'd be interested to see what you thought about it, but I thought beforeners was really interesting because it does something new. It's like, I've seen so many of these now and it's, it's kind of interesting to be surprised by something or, you know, to see a new twist on it. So that I think it has that going for it. And, and it's sort of, maybe it's just me, but I feel like it's really hard to watch and not think about the context of, you know, contemporary refugee crisis. I mean, it's just, you know, you have people, but then, then it's sort of layered in a different way. You know, they're all, it's, it, it's not ethnic. It's just people are different. They talk differently. They have different culture. So it, it's sort of framing it as a cultural difference. And, um, and, but I, I thought that was pretty fascinating. And, and they're clearly like trying to go beyond like the typical Nordic noir, but also they're using some of the, I mean, they still have the investigation. So they're using these like noir, um, you know, or, you know, police investigation tropes. And then the series specifically just about migrants and refugees, there aren't as many, but I think some of them are really interesting. In the, in the, the book chapter, I talk about Eden along with Occupied and um, Capitani. And I think Eden is really interesting, but frankly, not as entertaining. I mean, it, it's by Dominique Moll, the, um, the French, you know, known as sort of a genre film director, but um, interesting, but not, not as entertaining, partly because they kind of follow all these different trajectories all across Europe, rather than focusing on like one particular kind of place, which I think is what makes a lot of these series kind of interesting is this the sense of place but taken down i thought was i thought was good too i have i've only seen briefly home but um bruce um bennett talked about it a couple of weeks ago and it because um somebody from one of the films that he was from one of the documentaries he was talking about actually ended up playing like a small role in that but um and all these other ones they obviously the tunnel pagan's peak devil's throat which is bulgarian i haven't seen it yet but it's it's a new one that i came across recently another one that's set on like an outer border of europe but and be foreigners are all about migrants clearly in some way but it's not really the main focus so um all this is in the um 
in the paper. But I did want to just quickly show a couple like visual examples of some of the things I talked about in there. So this is the Vataha tourist map as they, they put it. So I, I really like this idea of like, the, this is the main character and sort of this, the star of the series, um, who's a police detective who ends up, or a border border patrol detective who ends up, you know, escaping, um, you know, sort of gets implicated in something, perhaps falsely. I don't, I don't think I've figured that out yet. I haven't seen far enough in the series, but, and then he flees um, and is living kind of on both sides of the border, kind of trying to flee the, um, the authorities, but just you know, projecting that the main character over borders really, I think, or over the map makes us think about how all the you know, to a way like all of these things on the map, the lines on the map are to a lot of to a great extent kind of you know their narrative, right? There's sort of like this idea of their their fictions that either support them or create them in the first place is really fascinating, and this um, you know, uh, Aero TV map sort of the cartographic marketing is one of is one of the um, I forget who said that but one, one of the people that I cite and then from just my examples from the the series this is um detective Carl Roebuck the French detective or the British detective who's crossed over into um into Calais um on a ferry and he's stuck in a roundabout of course and he um gets out this paper map so I think it's really fascinating because most of the series don't you know don't really paper maps seem to be um you know not useful and they're clearly showing them as kind of um, outmoded in different ways, but it, it shows the setting really well too. You know, he's pulled over to check this map and um, you've got the industrial sort of um, port, post-industrial port background there and he's trying to decipher this map. And then the French detective says like, oh, I don't, who uses maps? He offers her a map at some point and she just kind of scoffs at him. So I think there's clearly like some kind of, you know, interesting, interesting reference to just like, how how we map things that somehow I didn't get into this in the paper, but this is kind of an open question I have is like that I think is if you think about watching things on you know um, SVOD as there, there's some sort of um, I don't want to call it democratization, but diffuse like there are all these multiple points rather than you sort of your position at your you're a particular dot. You're not looking at a big map where everybody has a common television culture necessarily. You're a dot on this somewhere that's only sort of can only see the space right around you, and it's suggesting you know other things um, by algorithm. So there, there's something for you know, somebody much cleverer than me to to come up with. I think uh, you know some sort of interesting theory about how GPS and um, SVOD sort of goes goes hand in hand. Um, this is from Occupied, which I think is a really fantastic series. Have you, you seen that? Yeah, the, um, and it, again, it's different. I mean, it, they clearly play off of the popularity of Nordic Noir, but they do something very different. Um, I think I quoted this in the, I, I can't, maybe I didn't quote it in here, but the um, Les Anglok, the influential French culture magazine said it was the, um, you know, the series that makes everybody love geopolitics. Um, which I thought everybody loved geopolitics already, but yeah. So, um, uh, so, so it's kind of, you know, there's, again, it's, it's, it's got some noir in it and um, police investigation, but it, it's a more geopolitical framing. And this is from the opening scene or the second scene, basically right after the opening that the Norwegian prime minister kid, is kidnapped and um, his, some member of a security detail is looking for him. You know, he has a tracker on him. He's using this GPS signal and he drives off of course into the woods and the signal is lost. So clearly, uh, you know, symbolizing lots, lots of um, different things, but also you don't see any of the sort of representation maps that I showed you in um, from uh, the tunnel it's it's all you know it's all fragmented it's, it's all positioning um, and this is from Capitani this is a, a, a montage that I put together slightly clumsily but it, it shows at the beginning the de the, the detective um, that we see this close-up of an address with a Portuguese name and um, you know in a small town in Luxembourg, which as I know is kind of interesting because I think it's one out of six residents of Luxembourg are Portuguese, you know, not a extremely well-known fact, but, um, <laughs> but connected by different, you know, um, migration during the, um, you know, during the Salazar regime in particular. And um, obviously a lot of Portuguese are in France as well um, and in Portugal or in um, Switzerland too, but, but in Luxembourg, it's a, it's a big, they even have a, a Portuguese language page on their national newspaper. So it's kind of inter interesting. So it's clearly like this address that's sort of immediately situating the place in a, in a wider context. And then the mapping sequence or, sort of, or the driving montage when we see, we never see the map, we hear the map instructions, which are in French, even though they speak mostly Luxembourgish in the, in the film. So it's kind of in, or in, the, in the series. Um, and then the navigation system is 
um, giving us these instructions. And as I men mentioned in the piece, we just keep seeing these recurring images of, I mean, you don't really get much context. You see these um, sort of uh, low, uh, the shots of tunnel roofs, um, sort of passing non-place kind of infrastructure that sort of suggests like, an isolated, we don't really see how he gets from here to there. We just sort of see like the infrastructure that could suggest like an isolated or also maybe a reminder too that even this place that seems so ensconced and isolated is just is actually, you know, connected as well. It's not just a, a drive through pastoral, pastoral countryside. Um, and these are my lingering questions or my main lingering questions. So I'd be interested in sort of seeing what everybody else thinks, but um, just wanted to highlight how some of the you know, recurring, the top, I think the top right is a marketing image, but everything else are, are screenshots, but sort of how these types of forest images are used to, to sell things that the logging, which is a kind of a recurring theme that goes along with like loss of forests. You could think of a lot of these in sort of a eco um, ecological eco criticism type of context. This is the, I think that this logging truck is from the Taha, but there are a few other series where logging and then the red shirt um, or red jacket is from the murder victim in Capitani. So that's another, these say like recurring theme is that murdered murdered children specifically, you know, younger girls, but also the, this puts us in the lineage of you know, the, the red jacket, I think is winking at the lineages of uh, fairy tales and, um, you know, long tradition of Gothic um, literature as well of things that, bad things that happen in the woods and, but also the woods is kind of a place of, you know, fantasy and possibility too. So. Um, so that's what I had. So I'd be interested to hear what um, what everybody else um, thought, or any any comments, or what what your lingering lingering questions are.